Back in 2006, the International Olympic Committee ruled against including women's ski jump in this year's games. Even though men have been competing in the event since the first Winter Games in 1924, and even though top women ski jumpers are really, really, really good at it right now. The IOC's position has been that the women's sport of ski jumping isn't developed enough. Women haven't been competing on an international, international level long enough. That said, ski jumpers and their advocates are quick to point out that ski cross is an even newer sport with fewer competitors, and ski cross has been allowed to be in this year's games. A group of women ski jumpers has claimed discrimination. Lending support to their argument is this both inspiring and infuriating data point. A ski jumper named Lindsey Van actually set the distance record for the hill that the male Olympic ski jumpers will be competing on tomorrow, but she cannot compete on that hill in these games because, of course, she's female. Joining us now is Kara Perlman. She's a filmmaker who has been documenting efforts by women ski jumpers to be included in the Olympics. Kara, thanks very much for being here. It's nice to have you here. Thank you. I will admit to um, frustration about the fairness issue here, but also some frustration about the facts. So I hope you can just help me understand it, most of all. When Lindsey Van set that record on the hill on which the men will be competing, she started higher up on the mountain. And that was explained to me as being because she was lighter. So being lighter affords some sort of competitive disadvantage that has to be compensated for by moving you higher up the hill. That sort of made sense to me until I read in the New York Times today that the way that men try to become more competitive in the sport is by making themselves lighter, in some cases by starving themselves to the point of eating disorders. Can you help me understand the contradiction here? Well, I, I think lighter is part of it. I think it's also um, women have hips. I think the bar has been ch changed for their physiques. I think also uh, they have a different musculature, different muscle energy. They don't have the testosterone. I think it's an adjustment on a few levels. So when she's moved higher up the mountain, it's not a decision that's made purely on the basis of weight. No. Because if, if, that, if that explained it, then you would think that it would be like boxing, where there'd be sort of featherweight, heavyweight, lightweight. People would start at the uh, different parts of the mountain based on their weight class. But that's, that's not, it's not that simple. It isn't that simple. And I'm also not a technician, so I couldn't go into you know the deep, deep reasons for this. But they do they do it very carefully, and they do it so that it's safe and so that it's fair, and that's the solution that they came up with: weight, body body structure, and uh, musculature. So that's why those those differences explain different levels of performance and different strengths and weaknesses between the genders in this sport. Um, when women are competing now, they're not competing against men, but they do sometimes jump on the same courses so we can compare their distances, right? Absolutely, and they also train together often enough. You know, they're often all together in training. And when you say that one of the issues is women's musculature and just body shape, uh, wh how does that make a difference in terms of men's and women's hip width being different? Um, how does that make a difference in terms of how they compete? I, th I, I think, you know, I'm not, again, a coach or a technician, but I, I mean, just from watching for all these years, I would say that the way the the way women ha women's physiques, they don't get down as, they tend not to go down as low mm -hmm. when they're, they're coming down the in run. Um, I, you know, I don't, I, They approach it differently. In other they words, do. they have to physically yeah. approach it they differently. They do, and, and you know, they were saying this year in, in the Times, they were, there was an article about how women are five times more likely to tear their ACLs, and this is because women are not supposed to be trained in the same way as men because they have a different physique and you know different things happen. In terms of these women trying to get into the Olympic Games, obviously they made a case for themselves that they should have been included in the Olympics. When you started uh, doing uh, working on this documentary, when you started working with them, did you think that they would be in the Olympics this Absolutely. year? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. Why? Um, when I first saw them, they were denied access to uh, 2006 in Torino, and there was a, a real push, largely from the Americans, but the Canadians and the Norwegians also, to get these girls in. And um, they they lobbied hard for them. And um, there was a meeting in Portugal of the uh, International Ski Federation, and they were recommended for the Olympics, 114 to one. Hmm. So, and that looked like the difficult institution to get on their side, and they were thrilled.
but then ultimately the International Olympic Committee just said no. They said no. Um, in terms of the, the future here, I think women have made a strong case for themselves on athletic terms and on fairness terms that they ought to be doing this. Um, do you expect that the next Olympics will have them? Is it just a matter of demonstrating that more women can compete at an international level? There just need to be more people in the sport? I'd like to think that's exactly what could happen, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, I would be optimistic, yes. But I also think that the IOC has demonstrated their need for sovereignty, and they have expressed a lot of disdain for the women fighting for their cause and have threatened, some people in the IOC have threatened that if the women keep it up, they might not make it into 2014. So. It's not clear. So stop advocating. We'll decide when you're there. Shut up, and we'll take care of it. Exactly. I can't imagine why that would be annoying to anybody who's <laughs> strong enough to be a world-class athlete <laughs> on, a suspect, on a subject like this. Uh, Kara Perlman um, is chronicling women's ski jumpers for documentary. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you.